The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the uh, January 13th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you're going to have a great Monday evening. Some football, I believe, is going to be played this evening. But in the meantime, you and I, we're going to go play this game of bulls and bears. What the markets are doing, of course, I would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there. And the phone lines are open. So, too, are the email lines. Steve at TFNN.com is my email address. Uh, please, if you're going to send me an email with a request to look at something, uh, just put the uh, radio show question in that subject heading of the email. That'd be great. And of course, in our Tigers Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow up 65 points, about a quarter of a percent. NASDAQ is up uh, about 1%, 9 tenths of a percent. That's 82 points. Semis are up a little over 1%, 21 points. What, 1887 is what that is printing. That's so all the uh, indices are in the green out here. Spot volatile index has fallen back two pennies, trading out at 1254. Gold's off about 10 bucks, 1550 and a little change. Silver is down 10 cents, trading out at 18 bucks, even Stephen. Light sweet crude is off 62 pennies. Natural gas down three cents. Their treasury is a 30 year market. The treasury bill is off seven ticks out there. Lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. It is Tesla up 41 bucks, eight and a half percent. Mercado Libre up 23 bucks, three and a half percent. Beyond Meat is beyond my comprehension, but it's beyond meat. It's up 16% or 16 bucks. Shopify up 14. Buckaroonies and Cardlytics up 21% or $14. To the downside, it's a Biomed. That's off uh, $25 or 13%. Five below is below. It's the below by 16 bucks or 13.5%. Inogen up 13 bucks, 21%. There's some big movers and shakers out here. Exact Sciences, Exact, exact Sciences Corp. Just got to say it slowly. Down 11%, $11 in change out there. Now, no requests in uh, yet. So uh, let's just go take a look at the uh, general markets, try to figure out what's going on. Let's take a look short term out here. First, let's just start with what's going on. The play by play for the short term charts. Let's begin by taking a look at the 30 minute time frame chart here for the ES mini. We can see that nice three drive to a bottom pattern that formed uh, coming into the close on Friday. Nice big old hammer candle. This is the ES mini 30 minute time frame chart. If you and I, if I were just to give you this blank chart, somewhat blank, and I was, uh, of course, you would you would see this green solid line going across up at the 3284 level out there. You would see that, but at the, at the lows out here, if I were to have said to you, where is it that do you think on a 30-minute basis the ES mini would be targeting, or where is resistance? Well, you would have said to Stevo, 3284. So, voila! Now, if we start doing our little wave count, I understand Basil is in uh, Australia fighting the fires uh, for a while. And uh, if we're going to use part of his tools, the Chapman Wave uh, count out here, we start from the bottom of that 30-minute hammer candle. Well, what happened as price was getting up to 32.84 was wave number seven. That's kind of like your seventh inning stretch out there. That's candle. That's letter number seven in the alphabet, letter G on my screen, because those number notations are our TD setup nine counts out here. So prices run right up into resistance. So if you're a person that wants to short this market, feels like you should, then now is the time. 3284. Uh, however, uh, maybe not so fast out there. Maybe you should wait till the end of the day. It's not like there's some level of support that has been broken through. But that is the 30 minute chart, and it wouldn't surprise you, me, or anybody else if we did see the market stall here. But here's the deal if the market does continue to move higher, don't you like that background screen? Uh, if the market does continue to move higher out here, 
uh, or close above on a 30-minute basis that uh, that TD9 count breakdown level. Boy, that's telling you that it wants to move to higher price. Now, the 60-minute time frame chart, that too had a TD setup. No, I'm, I apologize. Well, it had a TD setup nine count bottom, and in price uh, 3284 was also its breakdown level. So you got doble gi resistance, so to speak, out there. Now we got to go beyond really the 60 minute and the 30 minute time frame. Let's step things up a little bit out here. Boom! Let's go take a look at the five hour time frame chart. That's stepping things up, don't you think? Now, if we take a look at the uh, five hour time frame chart, this is a great example of why we need to understand the responsibility of buyers or sellers when they provide you and I with topping patterns and signals out here. So, if we take a look at the Yes Mini, we would see the same thing inside the NQ for its five hour time frame chart. We're going to see that when it did top, now, when I'm saying it did top, let's go uh, grab the uh, cursor out here. Right here, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, I hope you are. That was at 9 o'clock in the morning. That was on, November, on January the 10th out there. When it did top, it was with a TD setup nine count. So you got a valid topping pattern. And then the responsibility of sellers is to always push price back to support. So the change in trend cannot take place until we begin to see support fail. So there's several different tools that you and I can use for support. On my charts, you see those support levels identified by market profiles. In this case here, you can see how price was able to push lower. Remember, the body of the candle is truly the essence of price. Those wicks, those upper and lower shadows, they just tell you about the extreme emotion inside the market. They can release information to us, but it's really all about the body of that candle. And where did the body of that candle close on Friday? Right at support right at support yep now price is moving higher doing less relative energy on the five hour time frame chart but that won't mean a thing if it don't have that swing and that swing would be some type of bearish reversal candle to suggest a swing back to support which right now is still 3263 below that would be 3236 out there so it's really important just simply to grasp and understand that concept when you get some type of topping signal that uh, to 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 call it uh, the end of the world or something along those lines there would have to be no support all the way down. That is just simply not how markets operate out there. Now, in the daily time frame chart here for the ES Mini, one of the few that did not generate a bearish reversal candle on Friday out there. Uh, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. We are in wave number six. That would be letter F on my screen. Coming from the uh, lows out here in uh, December is what it looks like. So we've got topping scenarios out there, but nothing that has been confirmed inside the ES Mini on its daily time frame. Price is above Stevie's green line, so therefore things remain bullish for it. You want to talk about a bull? What do you already know about? About this bull here everybody has been riding that bull when I say everybody that does not necessarily mean you I just kind of use it as a you know I don't know a metaphor a metaphor for what I'm not sure but here if we take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart for the NQ you can see that it did generate a bearish reversal candle on Friday that was a dark cloud cover but price never got below Stevie's green line never even tested Stevie's green line that's telling you mucho grande uh, strength out there is that even possible probably not so that's just butchering a few things out here but what I'm not butchering is telling you that support has not been broken no siree 89.81 is that first key level of support on any kind of a move lower. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. Please put a radio show question in that subject heading. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, all the indices in the green. Dow's up 55. S&P is up uh, 16. We've got a couple of requests in. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. The first one from Ed. And Ed says, hey, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, Ed. Ed goes on to say, I'd like to buy a cup of Joe. Would you please take a look at J-O for me out here? So let's go take a look. I believe that is the coffee ETF out here. Let's uh, go. And uh, that is the Bloomberg Coffee Sub Index. So uh, what I'm going to do for you, and here, we'll just take a look at the ETF. And I'm not going to use the ETF to assist you with that call. ETF-wise, we can see prices trading below the daily and the weekly profile. So that suggests further price pressure to the downside. But this is not going to... Oh, I don't have my screen up here. Sorry. There we go. Now you can see it. Okay, sorry about that. So now we're taking a look at the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame for the uh, ticker symbol JO. That is the uh, ETF uh, to be long coffee futures. And what you can see on here is prices below the uh, bottom of its daily and its weekly profile. But what you and I are going to do in order to uh, assist with uh, this trade out here is go actually take a look at the uh, March 2020 coffee contract. Now we're really primarily taking a look at the uh, daily and the weekly. So those are panels on the very right hand side. The very right hand side panel is the weekly. Next to that is the daily. Now in this case here, what we can see in taking a look at the March 2020 contract for coffee is that actually the bottom of its profile is at 109.47. So unlike the ETF that showed price below profiles, it is, and this is why we really want to use the underlying instrument. So here, just simply from a price target standpoint of using the market profiles, I say you've got to keep your hands in your pocket. Now we're going to go use my other tools out here to help us identify what's going on. You didn't really give me time frames, so you know that what you're looking for. Um, so I'll just kind of I'm um, going with the daily chart, but we'll look at an intraday chart just to get a feel for what's going on. But nonetheless, right now and just profile land 109.47 is the number but let's go take a look at what's going on on the uh, daily time frame out here so the daily time frame as we open this up um is trading as we know trading below the bottom of its daily profiles 109.25 is where coffee broke out its most recent breakout level that's using the td9 count areas now we can also see that today is going to be bar number eight of a potential of a potential td setup nine count pattern 
Uh, tomorrow uh, needs to confirm. That means tomorrow's close would need to be below bar number five, which is right around, well, I'll give you the exact number out there, 118.25. And uh, even a lower low. And, and now remember, on a TD9 count, it can be bars eight that makes a low. Bar nine, this we're talking about price moving lower, or the day following bar nine. So it might not be until Wednesday when you want to, or Thursday when you might want to take a look at uh, getting into that cup of Joe out here, at least based upon this pattern. Ideally, you'd see TD9 count form above 109.25 out there. And um, so that's what the daily time frame chart. Let's go look at the weekly chart out here, the weekly that says, hey, price might pull back to 109.47. What was this number I had? 109. 25. So there's a really good range for you. 109.27 to 109.45. Now let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here. And uh, I drew this pattern in during the break. And we can see a nice little butterfly cell pattern that was forming on a weekly basis for the uh, March coffee futures contract. Now let me get rid of that pattern. You can see that out there. What you're also going to see is a TD setup nine count top. So remember, we're looking at the daily time frame chart. So I'm glad that you wrote in asking this because here we can see how this pattern can work. It doesn't work all the time, but most but when it does form, you start to pay attention. Well, in the case of coffee, it topped on bar number eight. Hey, maybe on the daily chart, it's going to bottom on bar number eight. Uh, this I don't know. I don't control it. What we don't like here from a bullish standpoint, you wanted to buy coffee, is the mere fact that on Friday, uh, price closed below Stevie's Greenland, 120.46. And with this topping signal, remember how we talk about when you get a topping signal, sellers should be able to push price back to support. So it's important to find support. So now we're going to go back to that weekly profile. When I say go back to it, that's going to be the number where I would say price would be targeting. If price gets below that, well, you're looking at 97.05. Those are the two key support areas here. As I minimize that uh, screen, you'll see again see 109.47. So it looks to me like that is where coffee is headed to. And uh, there was also an A to B equals CD down pattern, right? Sure, there was. Uh, if we take a look at it, th this will give us. A, so this could also be setting up a a Gartley buy pattern. Now I'm just going to throw in the uh, the A to B equals C D to the downside. See where we're at here. So today is below the one to one level. One one point two seven two is one twelve thirty two. The one six one eight is one oh six twenty four twenty five. So what you're really also looking for is some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm this pattern that is not present at the uh, moment. I'm looking at the monthly chart doesn't provide you or I with any information. So my answer with regard to uh, getting into uh, coffee at this stage, oh, I did say I would look at the short-term charts for you because you didn't tell me the time frame, is to keep those, uh, keep the, uh, uh, how, how, do, how do I say it? Uh, uh, no, not just yet. Now, if you were a short-term trader, well, that's a different scenario out here. Now, by short-term, if I just look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, uh, I can see an A to B equals CD to the downside. I can see a hammer candle. And right now, at Java, what coffee is trying to do is take on Stevie's red line. If it closes above that, expect a bounce up into the 116.85 area. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. Lastly, out here, 240-minute, the four-hour time frame chart. Let's go take a look at it. Price is pushing lower, doing a with less relative energy. You can see an A to B equals CD to the downside. But what I would not do is uh, enter into a long trade until we see a close above Stevie's red line. Right now, that's printing at 116.68. Hope that helps you out with with uh, coffee. Now let's go out to uh, Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Do we have Ron? Ron, you there? Ron, hello. So uh, we must have lost Ron, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, he did uh, indicate that he wanted to take a look at uh, Ameren Corp out here. Uh, Rod, if you're listening, you want to call back, feel free to do so. I'll take a look at this. Don't know which direction it is you're looking at. Doesn't really matter. Let's just take a look at what the market is telling us is the uh, direction or potential direction. Now, we can see here that price is trading below its daily bottom of its bullish structured profile. It's been below that for two, four, five trading sessions now. And today was a test of that level, 2061. So far, it's acted as resistance. That's suggesting to you and I that price wants to move lower. Now, lower to where? Well, price above the weekly profile at 1920. 
1928. And so that's a key level of support. Close below 1928 for two bars in a row. Boy, that would suggest lower price. 1496, 1712, something along those lines. But let me pull over the daily time frame chart, see what we can see here. Uh, you can see that it looks to me like, well, if there's a close below the, uh, so this, the daily chart is suggesting to you and I that it wants to move lower, right? Well, I say right. You're, you're kind of like, what do you mean right? Okay, so if you take a look at today's action, we saw how price tested rejected the bottom of its daily profile. Now we can also see that intraday what it also did was it tested Stevie's green line and rejected that level. It needs to close above Stevie's green line to say, hey, maybe the bottom is over. Now there is a hammer candle. A hammer candle from about four trading sessions ago. Let's go take a look at that. The exact day out here, you're going to be watching January 9th. Because if price closes below that candle session, well, then you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. That A to B equals CD to the downside looks something like this. It formed a really nice uh, top on that daily basis with that Rhodes momentum uh, signal generated by that uh, bearish engulfing candle or triggered by that bearish engulfing candle. You're one to one would take into the 1609 level, 1469, 1609. That's what it looks like to me, Ron, and taking a look at ticker symbol AMRN. See Rhodes with watch that hammer candle. You're right. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the next question coming in from Tim M. Tim writes in, uh, Steve, does it look like SoftBank 
And that ticker symbol, folks, is SFTBY. Does it look like SoftBank has bottomed? If so, what is a good entry point? Well, if we take a look at the chart here, um, yeah, I'd say it's, it's, it's at least bottom, but now the question is, is it topping? All right, we've got uh, soft, well, I don't know if it is or it isn't, but we'll go look at the charts out here. So you've got SoftBank right now printed at 2256. It's above its uh, daily profile. 2154 was resistance. It's above the weekly profile. It closed above the weekly profile five weeks ago at 2021. Uh, so that says, okay, I don't have any market profile resistance. So we go look at the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame shows 2429 is the center of its bearish structured box out there. So that may be a target out here. You're asking what's a good entry point. Well, now this is like a runaway train out here. So you'd have to be uh, playing a momentum move. But let's pull over the daily time frame chart, see what this suggests. Uh, Timmy, this suggests to you to be cautious, be careful out here. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's got a nice run. We can see an A to B equals CD pattern uh, out here. Uh, we can see prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. By the way, when it made its bottom, which was back on October 26, it was the 29th, that confirmed that signal. That Rhodes momentum indicator was confirmed with that uh, rising window, that gap to the upside on October the uh, 30th. So that was really your bottom, which would have given you a price projection of its breakdown area, 2133. That is where price kind of stalled for about a week or so. Uh, price is above that level. If it can continue rising, though, Tim, and break through this uh, RMI signal out here, 2659 would be the target. You're going to ask me what's a uh, what's an entry price? Well, you'd have to go with Stevie's green line right now, pull back up to 21.94. But I, I would prefer not to see the Rhodes momentum indicator signal present um, on trying to buy a test of support being Stevie's green line. So I think you've got to be careful here. Well, average true range is 39 cents uh, over the last 10 days in case you do want to take that trade. Uh, I can see my weekly charts not giving me a whole lot of information, but the monthly is. So let's pull the monthly chart over here. In the monthly time frame chart, what do we see? We see that prices run right up. So if this is only a counter trend rally inside of SoftBank, Tim, then now in essence is the time. Now, I'm not referring to 1.32 in the afternoon on January 13th. I'm just kind of using now as a relative, uh, but, but basically about now give or take, right? You've got the daily chart moving up with less relative strength out there. We saw that pattern. Um, here, we can see that price, uh, it's had a nice road to momentum indicator top, that bearish engulfing candle out there. Um, now, if this is only a counter trend rally in SoftBank, you can see prices basically in the vicinity of Stevie's green line, and it'll end somewhere in this vicinity. So I would say based upon those two factors, you've got to keep the powder dry. The only way to really play a breakout is to see a clear break above, I don't have the exact number, but we'll call it 20... Nah, I should give you the exact number. I can do it. I was just being lazy. Sorry about that. Don't let that happen again. The exact number was 2261. I was going to guess 2260. Uh, so you really need to see that level cleared and price to stay above that, in my opinion, to take any kind of momentum trade. So, Tim, I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol SFT. B Y. We've got a request to go take a look at uh, CCJ as opposed to CCR. I prefer to go take a look at CCR, play some nice tunes out there. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, let's go take a look at Consolidated Coal Resources. That's what CC. Uh, I put CC. I, I was thinking. I know you asked for CCJ. I'm talking CCR. You know, this is the whole idea of. Um, and you're going to say the whole idea of what? Uh, this is the whole. Uh, this is the whole idea. When you're driving, um, that uh, your steering wheel is going to go where you're looking. Then I can see in my mind, I was apparently looking at CCR, even though I thought I was typing CCJ because I'd mentioned it. You, you know what I mean? The mind is an amazing thing. But the question was what? What was the question? What was the question with regard to CCJ? Do you see any signs of a bottom in CCJ? Well, let's go take a look at it. Right now, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. You don't see a center of that box on the daily time frame because it was at the bottom, which says strong support at that 869 area. Price now above the top, not above the top of the weekly profile. So here uh, you've got resistance at 929. It's in between the uh, profiles on the monthly time frame charts. Let's go take a look at uh, Chemico, which is uh, Chemico, right? Chemico. Uh, yeah, I'm a comedian, CCJ out there. But let's go take a look at it. The question was, do we see a bottom out here? You know, in essence, we do. We see a TD9 count bottom right back here. And then we see this top with a TD set up nine count peak. 
Yeah, you, I, you might show up one of these days instead of being peak D. You might be TD9 for all, and you might have you might have multiple aliases out there. You can't just can't just keep it all for the peaks out here. But in any event, you got a, a TD9 count top. Amazing how that works. And what does price do? All right, topping signal it's supposed to send price back to support. It did go ahead and push it back to support. What was support? 862. So there you go. As Gus in my big fat Greek wedding would say. So it looks like you've got a bottom out here. Price was pushed back to support. It held it. Uh, and now the question is, what's it going to do? Could just be consolidating, you know, with nine in the 930s or so being the top of that consolidation. It is a bottom. There's no reason why this can't go ahead and make a move to 980. That's its breakdown level out here. Uh, so that could be the consolidation between 860 and 980. Let's go look at the weekly time frame chart, see what we can see out here. Remember, we've also got 929 as a resistance level. Now, if we take a look at CCJ, yeah, touchdown. That would work. Uh, if we take a look at CCJ, look. Uh, the weekly chart, 887, was a support area, and prices trade above 886, Stevie's green line, the oscillator and change line. It's not like this is overly bullish, but you were asking the simple question. See, what does it look like at bottom? We saw price held the bottom of support. Now, just like uh, we were looking at in um, the instrument before, uh, here in the monthly chart for CCJ, you know, Stevie's red line has really just knocked the schnockers out of this. Whatever schnocker is, it's been knocked out of the monthly time frame chart. Look how that has really acted as resistance. Now, I'm going to give you what that value is. On a monthly basis, if this thing is really going to begin moving, you need to see it close above that level. That level right now is 913. 913 is the uh, number out there. So you asked if it's bottomed. It has. It's just got this little resistance area, and maybe it's trading in a consolidation. But to answer your question, which i just going to beat a dead horse. Yeah, uh, we see the bottom. It's very clear and it's evident. Now the question is, you know, where does it run to out here? Um, okay, let's go see if we've got any other requests out there. Uh, yep, Hector and the fuel injectors. He wants to get in on this game, too. Hector wants to look at, he's got SBUX, at Starbucks. Uh, coffee, talked about coffee, must have put him in the mood. What is the question out here? If coffee coaches are headed south, then Starbucks must be headed north. Well, let's go take a look at it. Uh, right now, it is headed north, at least today. It's trading up at 91.44. It is above the top of that daily profile out there, so we've got to go find its next level of resistance. Well, when we do that, it's not on the weekly time frame chart because price is above the top of that box. And on the monthly chart, price is above the top of that box. So this is TAS market profiles. They're just not going to help us. Not at least answering the question, hey, where is Starbucks headed to? So let's go look at the daily time frame chart using Stevie's other tools, see what we can see out here. And there you go. So you got to love this. Take a look at the nice bottom of this form, nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, right? Here it is. I say right, you say wrong. Either way, it was Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Nice bullish reversal candles at that point. And if I were going to ask you, what's the ultimate outcome for Starbucks? Where is it going to trade to with that bottom? You would have said 91.77. What's the high today? 91.72. So Starbucks has got a little bit of resistance. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 47, s and is up uh, 16. Let's go to our next question. Next, Oh, we were still talking about Starbucks with uh, Hector. So the daily time frame, Hector, right now we know that uh, what Starbucks is dealing with is, is a level of resistance. It last broke down 91.77. Uh, I don't see a topping signal other than prices dealing with resistance. Now, uh, it could be the end of the run here for Starbucks. Uh, if not, and there's a close above 91.77, 96.96 would become the uh, next price target from its daily time frame standpoint. Let's go take a quick peek here at the weekly, see what the weekly chart shows us for Starbucks. It's going to show us that prices above Stevie's green line at 90.55. Uh, this is going to be bar number eight, or it looks like it may be bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. Is that important to Starbucks? Well, the last high was a TD setup nine count, happened to come on bar number eight. The last Last bottom was a TD setup nine count. It was the bar after bar number nine. That's where we're in right now. So I would say if, uh, yeah, no, use it until you, you know, if it keeps working, keep using it, so to speak, out here. So this would say Starbucks could be, uh, could be the high this week, could be the high next week, it could be the high the following week out there. And if that occurs, and there is a nine count, we won't know if there is. We need the weeks to play out here. Below 97.21, which is its price target, that's its breakdown level, uh, that could be the extent of the move for Starbucks. So watch the daily resistance level. Above that, then the weekly is supporting uh, a continued move higher. And if we look at the monthly time frame chart, the monthly time frame chart for Starbucks tells us what? Um, tells us that as long as price remains above 87.44, uh, this thing is uh, bullish. So, yeah. If uh, Starbucks should continue to head north, regardless of what coffee does out there, but first it must clear that weekly resistance area, and that was in the area of 91.77. Thanks for writing in. Joe Pesci writes in, and uh, no, it wasn't Joe. It says, uh, but it, uh, but 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 this individual, no, where I got that from, this is uh, JT. Now, where they possibly dwell, Jay, would be for Joe. How about that? And I was just looking at your email address out there. But JT writes in, says, uh, MJ, and I'm assuming that is not Michael Jordan, but instead the uh, pot ETF out here. So let's go ahead and get that up. Alternative energy or some energy or what is it? Uh, alternative, alternative harvest out there. That's what's up on the screen. And MJ wants to know, MJ has a wide... Wide price spring today. It most certainly does. At what price would you go long? I would have gone long this morning. That's an easy one, right? 
Now, uh, let's go take a look at it. So here's what we know about alternative harvest. It's really been, well, there's a brand new, well, profile began yesterday, at last, your Friday, uh, out there, brand new daily one. And price is above that, which is 1687. So that's that's good. That's nice for you. Um, you know what? Let's just let's just get to the straight scoop out here with regard to alternative harvest. You know, it's got a very valid bottoming pattern out here. Uh, I have tried this trade myself, uh, and it's got that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that formed on November 20th. Nice piercing candle gaps. Uh, well, it didn't really gap up the next day out there. Um, but uh, in and then uh, you know this morning was just testing Stevie's red line at 16.30. So you're really in the range, uh, JT. If you are looking to take a position, develop a position inside of alternative harvest, and you know in this area uh, is the is the uh, range. You know preferably you'd like to buy it down towards the 16.13 area, the bottom of that daily box, and price above the top of the daily box. So that could be. You know, adios, sayonara, and that would say a pullback to 1687 uh, could be it uh, for you. Um, let me look at the uh, day, the weekly chart out here for alternative harvest. What do we have here? You've also got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So this is truly really trying to bottom out here. It just can't find any energy, right? It's just really not. I mean, when we go back to this daily time frame chart, you actually see lower highs. This has yet to make higher highs. And in, in essence, JT, that's really one of the first things that you need to be looking for. So trying to form a bottom, but it just simply can't get out of its own way out here. The monthly time frame chart having just started January, well, that's in bar number nine on a monthly basis um, out here. So we know how those TD9s work. But, of course, that uh, low could take place next month, the bar after bar number nine. Don't pay attention to the fact that this month says that it's a hammer candle because this month is not over. It's only a hammer candle through January 13th out there. So, JT, um, you got the sideways range. Um, 1613 to 1687 is really the area if you want to begin a position there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. No other questions. So that's just uh, that's it. End of the show. Nah, I'm just kidding you. Let's take a surf around out here. Uh, to the extent that Jay is listening, don't know if that's the case or not. Jay, there is a new profile that the ES Mini is attempting to form. Now, if you look at this chart here that's got my daily and weekly profiles for the ES, the NQ, the YM, the RTY, the Russell 2000 out here, you're only going to see a new profile that's attempting to form in the ES Mini. Let's go ahead and expand this out. So there's potential new factors. When I say potential, I mean potential. Why do I mean potential? Because I'm using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool out here. And this profile may not take shape. Now, let me do this here. Let me go ahead and turn off price. It makes it a little bit easier to see. I don't want to get rid of that 2019 high at 32.54. And I might have to just to uh, might have to shut it down just for a moment. Where is that? Oh, I won't let me turn that off unless I got price on. There we go. Now I can turn it off. Now I can turn it off. There we go. So you can take a look at this profile. The top of that box is uh, 32.87. The center is at 32.55, the bottom at 32.12. Now you can see that this is a, uh, a bearish structured profile out there. Bearish in structure because the center is closer to the top in proximity to the top versus the bottom out here. But Jay, this profile has been attempting to form ever since last night and it has changed. Uh, this, is the third, this is the third iteration of it. So it's not like it's solid. It's solid as of 148 in the afternoon, and if price stopped right now, fairly good chance that it would take hold. Um, but so, so we'll have to really come back and take a look at it. But the numbers, we know where the numbers, support and resistance, where buyers and sellers are trying to line up. And the buyers are trying to line up around 32.12, and the sellers around 32.87. So let's go ahead and turn price back on inside the ES Mini out here. And uh, what did price do today? It got up to a high of 32.84.50, pretty darn close to 32.87. So remember, we began the show, we were looking at the ES Mini for its 30-minute time frame chart. And on the 30-minute time frame chart, I said, hey, now we can see the bottom that formed on Friday. Nice three drive to a bottom, confirmed with that hammer candle out here. Then price runs all the way up into resistance, 32.84. That's its breakdown level. And uh, so, so there's a resistance, not necessarily a top, but if, if this was just a counter trend move based on Friday's candle formation out there, then that would be it. Well, now you've got that along with the potential 
top of a profile. But here, Jay, we know how to play this, right? Because if there's a close above 32.87, hey, you'd want to be out of Dodge. That's if you were in the shorts, so to speak, out there. So uh, potential profile that is forming, watch that 32.87 level. But it is subject to change because I've seen it happen in front of my eyes this is now the third, as I said, the third iteration. No new profiles attempting to form inside the NQ or the Dow as we speak right now. Uh, Mr. Bill, thanks for that. So you got nearly a 1% expense ratio inside that alternative energy. So somebody's making money. Mr. Bill, someone's got to pay for the munchies. That's got to be what it's for, isn't it? Maybe a little cotton mouth, something along those lines. She wrote the TFN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow up 43, S&P 16, NASDAQ is up 84 points out there. No questions in. So let's go take a look at the SERP around, take a look at some of the other instruments that we have uh, missed here. Uh, I got to find my cursor. There we go. Let's go take a look at Goldilocks. It's back 10 bucks right now. If we take a look at uh, gold, see how it's trading in all the major currencies. Uh, lower in terms of dollars, in terms of euros. Now lower in terms of uh, yen, as well as pounds slightly. So where is gold pulling back to? Well, potentially 1532 to 1522 from a profile standpoint. But before that, 
what price is doing. Looks like for another day out here. Uh, I had already done that earlier this morning. It's testing Stevie's green line. Let me give you that exact number. That, as we speak right now, is 1548.40. If price closes below 1548.40, that's going to signal to us a further retracement. Now, you can see that this here is top with wave number seven. That's letter G. TD9 count top as well. So what sellers have done is what they were supposed to do, which is push price back to support. Well, the first level of support has been tested. This is the third day in a row out here. Uh, but if price closes below that level of support, then sellers will have really exerted their energy. And that would suggest pushing price back to the bottom of the daily profiles. And that would be 1532 to 1522. We take a look at gold on a little bit larger view. Here's the monthly time frame chart here's what we're going to see the geopolitical spike high ran right into resistance at that 1601 level that was its monthly horizontal trading range 1561 is its weekly horizontal trading range price has tested that uh, several times it first tried to get above that back in august of this year uh, i tried that in september of uh, i'm sorry not this year last year obviously it's january it tried it again obviously last week and it failed to hold 1561 so as you take a look at this chart here as we leave as we leave you i leave you with this question where do you think the price of gold is headed to 1462 1493 yep that's where it's headed to the bottom of that horizontal trading range the weekly and the monthly folks stay tuned david white's up next tom o'brien to take us home and i'll see you on terrific tuesday go tigers just figure out which one